I said in the video on resources overall, um, in the, at Red and Green, we learn about um, energy. So this second video on uh, resources is going to focus specifically on energy. Okay. So the first thing you need to know about energy is this, the link between supply and demand. Global patterns mean that energy is required for a wide range of activities like food, transport, and heating. Um, develop, uh, the more developed you are, the more demand you tend to have for energy. And you've got parts of the world that have a high supply and a high demand. Uh, and these include North America and parts of the Middle East and some parts of Europe. Okay, I'm thinking of Norway. I'm thinking of, uh, especially with uh, oil and gas and hydroelectric. Okay, in Asia, South America, North Africa, you've got a high demand, but you've got low supply. There's a few exceptions with Libya, etc., but you don't necessarily have that many resources in um, in those parts of the world. Um, Central and West African countries tend to have low demand and low supply. OK, um, there's an increase in demand overall in the world of energy. Uh, that's due to economic reasons. Agriculture uses a lot of energy, uh, a lot along with industry, transport, urbanization, and wealth. There's also a rising population in the world. And there's also a new uh, technology. OK, technology negative. It means that we can extract more and more fossil fuels in more and more remote areas because we've got the technology for it. However, it also means that we can focus on renewables, conservation and efficiency. So it's kind of a double edged sword in this case. OK, but the key thing here basically is understanding that some parts of the world suffer from energy security. Um, North America is a great example. Other parts got suffer from insecurity because they've got not enough um, energy. So the causes of these insecurities are, can be physical. So some parts of it are geologically uh, unfortunate. They don't have any resources there. OK, some parts are, have got a really bad, a good climate. Um, so they might have uh, loads of water. They might have loads of uh, altitude and the, uh, for hydroelectric. Some parts, uh, some parts will have loads of sunshine. OK, and other parts will have lots of reserves. So you've got a picture here of a, of a skeleton of a dinosaur. Lot, uh, you'll know that fossil fuels are, are made from um, uh, fossilized um, org living organisms for oil and gas and uh, um trees and uh, plants for uh, coal, okay? So it just depends on physical geography of where your country is located, okay? There's also a cost issue of energy insecurity. If uh, exploitation production costs are too high, you won't be, we won't be, uh, uh, costs are too high, there won't be, uh, pump, uh, not enough resources will be pumped out of the ground. Therefore, um, there'll be levels of insecurity because a country might not be able to afford it, okay? Technologically wise, some countries have advanced technology so they can look for unconventional fossil fuels, something you learn in year 13, such as deep sea or oil mining in the Gulf of Mexico or the tar sands of Alberta in Canada or uh, the fracking in the USA. OK, you can also invest in renewables, but that it requires technology, it requires funds. OK, and then the other cause of insecurity um, could be the fact that you've got a con uh, it, you can be in the middle of a conflict. Think of Iraq. It could be uh, you've got a bad trading relationship with your neighbor that has all the resources. You might have a corrupt regime. Um, unfortunately, Nigeria is a good example of how oil can lead to corruption. OK, the impact of this insecurity is that you're going to exploit fragile environments like the Arctic, the tropical rainforest. Valleys might get flooded through hydroelectric plants. Uh, I'm thinking of the Three Gorge Dam in China. Protected areas like Lake District, well, you can't just like put solar panels all over them. OK, um, and a problem will be an uh, impact will also be food. Farming relies excessively on energy. Therefore, if farming prices will rise if energy prices rise. It can lead to conflict. Iraq, Russia and Ukraine um, will go uh, that wars could happen because of uh, a thirst for energy and obviously fossil fuels lead to air water soil and pollution okay strategies that can be used for any uh, improving supply well non-renewable energy like nuclear there's advantages and disadvantages hinkley point c and seller field in the uk are a good example and there's renewables again there's advantages disadvantages that's common sense really for those okay the example case study to improve security in the uk is gas it's a fossil fuel formed by the decomposition of living organism on the seabed and um, under the right condition it'll fossilize and create gas uh, the uk had loads of that in the north sea we've ex used about three quarters of the stock the advantage is clean there's very little waste it disperses very quickly if there's a leak it's cheap it's easy it's volatile and there's loads of supply there was loads of supply in the uk disadvantage I didn't actually write it, but it's finite. It's odorless. It can um, you can have uh, it does lead to greenhouse gases. It's flammable. You need to build all the infrastructure. OK, and then you need to learn about sustainable energy uh, strategies. So the definition of sustainability is about reducing waste, improving efficiency, developing renewables that can be done through homes. You've got a list of things you can do to your house here you can do through transport you can a list of things you can do there. Reducing demand uh, by change, uh, subsidies, changing behavior and legislation and improving technology. CCS is for carbon capture storage. EVs is for electric vehicles. OK, and the case studies are for you need to learn are either solar farm in South Africa or the micro hydropower in Peru. I'll leave you to read it because I'm running out of time.